So uh, just go through this case. Um, it's not it's sort of a straightforward case. There's really no, no curveballs here, but um, it should sort of stimulate the um, uh, discussion for the whole gamut of uh, what Dr. Uh, Ramon talked about. It's a 71-year-old uh, gentleman who uh, he worked on a farm. Uh, he was, uh, while he was on the farm, he was crushed by a log. It impacted his right arm. He has been complaining of uh, right arm pain and deformity. Uh, he had uh, no numbness and tingling. Uh, the only significant um, past medical issues, he had a very um, significant cardiac history, but he was a, uh, a big time smoker. I mean, if he could smoke 24 seven, he would. Um, anyway, he came in uh, and this was his uh, post uh, is, is a post uh, splint application x-ray um, anything else uh, you guys would want to know about the uh, about the fracture we can open it up to everybody actually too um, so it's closed it was a um, I think it's on the next slide actually it's closed it's a nerve ascii intact uh, there's no wrist drop the arm was soft all the compartments were soft there was an isolated injury and uh, no, no skin tenting. Uh, of note, um, this guy, apparently, he was a little bit of a hard head. He absolutely wanted to return to work tomorrow. So he wanted to go back to work. He, he pretty much relied on his farm job to feed his family, and uh, he really didn't have the means to not be at work. Um, and he, but he didn't want big surgery. So <laughs> there you go. There, there you have it. Um, just a, a quick... Uh, just a quick pull so, in the room. So what does he consider small surgery? Making an incision. <laughs> you know, anything that you make an incision, but he wants to go back to work tomorrow. So I know that it's, it's clearly um, contradictory, but uh, that's, that's, uh, that's the story that apparently he, he, he gave. Um, just a quick pull in the room. How, how, many, how many of you guys would treat this closed? Uh, any, uh, any takers for, for plating? Any, any nailers? I am nailing. So, you know, like uh, um, Sakov talked about real quick, I mean, obviously there's a whole gamut of going through, you know, uh, close treatment, uh, obviously coactation, but we're just starting on to a brace or F, I am nails, uh, and obviously X fix. Um, just I mean, X a, a fix question. Is, X fix is a small surgery, I guess. <laughs> if he wants to have a small It's true. Surgery. It's kind of small yeah. surgery, I suppose. Break your artery explored later on. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the one thing I would also say. <laughs> One surgery or a couple of them? <laughs> actually, that's a, actually, it's actually an excellent point, Dr. Thurow, and, and, and you'll see why in a second. Um, One thing I was going to say also, uh, I, I would say uh, transverse fracture, isolated injury, uh, certainly, I mean, if he can hang in there with closed management, I would certainly offer that first, definitely. The only thing that worries me is there, there is some distraction on those initial x-rays. Transverse fracture, distraction like that, um, sometimes they don't heal. So yeah, yeah. Th this, yeah, is, the, that's, this that's, is the problematic yeah. humeral shaft, let alone the problematic patient who, who's not going to allow you to make a, a great decision for him. Transverse fracture, a little bit of comminution there, translation, mid-shaft. These are the ones that are, are, are non-union machines. And, and also, when, <laughs> treated, when treated surgically, the nailers of the group these increase their risk of non-union also with nerve injury, so. This guy should have came to you. Yeah. The, um, so. I just w want to make a point. Did everybody hear what Dr. Uh, Kazanjian said? I mean, the, the idea is, you know, when you look at the x-ray, it's like, oh, it's, you know, transverse, mid-shaft, sort of bread and butter, right? It's not really complicated. It's pretty, pretty simple fracture pattern. This should be easy. Um, just a question for the panel. Any, any, um, any pearls on coaptation splints versus Sarmiento braces for initial treatment? Do you guys put splints on, um, you know, in the ER when they, when they uh, per, first present? Do you take them to the OR to put a, a Sarmiento brace on? I mean, how do, you, how do you go about treating these acutely closed? I think a coaptation splint is perhaps one of the most difficult things to put on well. And it, this, you expect the patient to be compliant. This, this guy, I would imagine, won't be. So you got to put him in something that's comfortable. Um, depending on the size of his arm, the availability, you know, what's his insurance, can you get, can you get him a Sarmiento brace? How well does that fit? Does that jab him in the armpit? But if I'm going to treat him closed, one of the things that I do for, uh, we run into a lot of people who can't get them. Can you hear me? We run into a lot of people who can't get them, so you sort of have to make it up as you go. And what, what works pretty well is if you wrap them in Webroll up as high as you can. That's more right. tolerable in the axilla. 
as though you're going to put him in a cast and put it on like a Sarmiento brace and cover with an ace bandage and tape and then put him in that either in a cuff or something to support him. I might put him in a sling whether, whether he wears it or not, but just theoretically so he's not distracting himself with gravity. And I would start with that uh, as right. the, the day yeah. I met him. We're, we're all part of academic programs here, so I've frequently seen you know, humeral shaft fractures that looked relatively well aligned, and then not because the resin did anything incorrectly, they go in and put in a, a coaptation split and they, they become displaced. So if you see a relatively well aligned fracture in the ER, something that Dr. Thoder talked about is probably much better than putting it in a very uncomfortable coaptation split which can further displace the fracture because the fracture is in relatively good alignment with gravity. So if you can keep them comfortable, great. I think acute Sarmiento bracing would be better. Uh, I usually transition them at seven to 10 days or 10 days or so. But usually the, the, the coaptation splint displaces them further and then it makes your job more difficult in clinic to try to align them better. I try not to align them anymore. I mean, I, I teach splinting all of them and uh, converting them to a functional brace when they get to clinic. I mean, so I guess I kind of follow that Sarmiento protocol for the most part, but um, yeah, I would agree with the problems. Bracing's not easy, the technique is not easy, it's not that easy on the patient either. They come in saying, when can I get this off? But I would say I've seen plenty of fractures that come in uh, the door and then walk out with the splint looking a lot better than when they came in. So uh, yeah. I like splinting. Does um, the part of his history is smoking. Does that play a role on, in your decision-making tree, whether you guys uh, close versus, you know, plate, nail? Well, does, does that... Does that uh, if we're talking about... This, given this fracture if pattern. If we're talking about this guy, okay. with his history, Smoking does not play a part for me. I would fix him. I would tell him that all surgery is big surgery. I would say that you're going to smoke your reds or your palm oils, and you're going to try to be non-compliant. Uh, and I'm, I'm more of being conservative. Uh, this guy coming back at three months or at five months with a flail arm in a non-union is much more difficult to treat than someone you can treat now and at least try to get him to heal. And I've seen smokers with this fracture heal with uh, plate fixation and rigid plate fixation. So that would be my bias for this patient. So this was um, attempted to be done. So uh, he, he underwent uh, IM nailing of his uh, humeral shaft fracture. I po these were the only uh, fluoro shots I was able to get. So uh, these, uh, just for the question for the panel, anything, sure anything critically that uh, looking just at this, um, you know, good, bad, perfect, not good, just to, if you had to look at this critically. Uh, your nail is short, you've distracted the fracture site, you've violated his shoulder. Right, so um, I think all of us would agree, if you look at the bottom image, his fracture site does look to be uh, distracted. And that's what happens with these, it's, it's not a femur. You don't need to put a big ass nail in, in a humerus, and he's distracted. This was his, um, these are his immediate post-op x-rays. So any, uh, any, any comments on the post-op x-rays? I think Same. it's hard to get great compression with the nail. I mean, exactly. they, they, certainly all techniques may have been employed in this right. particular case it's, to try and get technique. it to compress more than that. I mean, I wouldn't say it's excessively distracted. It's a little bit distracted. It's probably almost the best you could do with the nail. Um, but other what, than that... What about those distal locking screws? Is it on your fluoro, were they bicortical or are they... Unicortical. Um, I'm not sure. I think because um, you only have one view. I mean, sometimes the X-rays, they look like they're unicortical, but under fluoro, you know, you get a good view, and, and they're truly bicortical. I don't know if they're a little bit short. I'm assuming they were bicortical, but yeah, I mean, on these images, you can't confirm whether they're bicortical or unicortical. So, I mean, that's that's where his initial post-op X-ray was, and I, I, I would agree with all the comments. I mean, um, you know, it, it, this may be the the best that uh, the compression that they could have gotten with given this this device. Three months, he uh, comes in like this. So at, at three months, he has this x-ray. His, his distal interlocking screws are obviously out. Um, he really doesn't have much, uh, much healing laterally or possibly even, even immediately for that matter. Um, what do you want to do with this guy at three months? We just sort of go down the, the, the panel here, Jack. Well, now you have a big problem. Now you have a shoulder that's violated. You have a, 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 an impending non-union. Uh, 
you know, he's got some windshield wiper distally, you got some thin bone down there, whether or not he has an infection. I would do the standard work of, of a delayed union. Is he infected? Would you do that now at uh, three months? Yeah, I would. I would. I would do it now. Uh, now you have dist now, now you have a guy who's a smoker, so if you're going to do non-union correction work, you have to get him off of his smoking because it'll increase his risk of further non-union. You have distal bone that is poor, so now you have to really increase the length of your construct uh, to give stability. Uh, and you have to take a rod out of his shoulder. Now he might have cuff dysfunction. So this is, this is a big problem. It's a big problem. So I would do, a, I would do an infection workup. Uh, CT is not necessary. I would warn him, I would tell him that if this is going to be fixed in my hands, you gotta, you gotta quit smoking. Uh, I would make him take a urinary continent test at some point. If he goes elsewhere because he wants to get fixed, then he's, you know, give me one less headache. And then I would prepare him for an infection at the site. I would do uh, bone graft, uh, compression plating, and probably uh, uh, or orthogonal plating down to his elbow due to the distal lysis that the rod has given him and, and make him aware that his shoulder function may not be great due to the rod. Do, do you guys, um do you guys routinely get CAT scans at, at this stage, at, at three months? Routinely get CAT scans for what? You mean to see if it's not healed? It's not healed. Right, if it's healed or oh. not healed. Um, I mean, I mean in, in this case, I can't tell. This case, I mean, it looks like it's, there's more um, lysis or gapping, whatever you want to call it, at the fracture site than there was post-op. So, yeah, everything Jack said is worrisome because that looks a little wider. There's the windshield wipering distally. No, I mean, I don't think I would get a CAT scan to see if it's not healed. Is, is uh, Samir Mehta here? Well, I, get it to I get a testosterone and a vitamin D. I'll make him more happy with his non-union blood work. So. <laughs> <laughs> so six months, he gets a CAT scan. So he's six months out. Um, this is, uh, again, this is just to show, um, you know, clearly the fracture is not healed, the nail's still in. Um, I don't know if you can sort of see it here, but if you really look really closely there, you can see that's one of the uh, screws sort of out, out in the middle of nowhere. Is it eroding into the brachial artery yet? <laughs> uh, and now, now, now this guy's really hurting. He's really miserable. He's not happy. Um, Dr. Thoder, any, any, any thoughts? Well, at, at this point, six months, yeah. you have this. Uh, I, you're, already late. you're already late now. I agree with Jack. You should have done something. Okay. Something would have been, I would have done something sooner. Right. I mean, the only thing he had going for him earlier was at least he was, looked like he was make, trying to make bone. So he did have some biology that if you can, uh, augment that, but I think he'd need to be bone grafted. I would orthogonally plate him. And All right, so just in the interest of time, just go through real quick. Um, um, at eight months, he did go to the OR. He did undergo bone gra acute bone grafting, a plate fixation. Um, at 11 months, he was, he was healed. So, Fix you know, in, in theory, uh, so, you know, going back to your original point, you know, if he had this done the, the first time around, maybe he would have saved him eight months. Yeah, I think, I think Sakib said it right, that the rod wasn't done poorly. I think it's not the appropriate implant for this fracture. And I think, unfortunately, uh, lots of rods are, are done for humeral shaft fractures, uh, and it's not the appropriate implant. Sometimes non-surgical treatment is appropriate, but, you know, true AO compression plating anteriorly is great blood supply. You can stay away from the nerve by going through the front. Uh, these are hard, though, transverse, because it's hard to get the bone to stay yeah. in, in position, but I think that would have avoided uh, this man a significant disability. Did you make him quit smoking? Um, I think, I'm not sure whether he quit smoking or not, but I think uh, he, he's, he's one of these hard heads, so what, what I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure he's did probably use, still smoking. Did you use Crest? Did you use Aspirate? Did you use uh, Auto Aloe? We actually, uh, we actually went over, but we actually reared his ipsilateral femur, Rhea? took, okay. took uh, bone from his femur, put it up in his humerus. Okay, very cool. All right, thank you very much, thank everybody. You. All right, thanks.